Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's Cornelia Stephanie here. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. My beautiful co-host, Dana Terrio, will not be with us today, but she's going to be listening and she's going to be tuning in because she is the one that introduced us to our very special guest that has been on the show before. And you know that we like to bring you top experts from around the world that have empowering information to share with you so that you can make your life better. And today's topic is going to be one of those ones where you're going to want to take notes because it's very empowering information. It's very healing. And I know that a lot of people um, are ready for this. So we have with us again, our very special guest, Summer Peterson. And Summer is the author of The Sexy Diet and the host of the TV show, Country Weight Loss with Summer Peterson. Welcome back to the show, Summer. Thanks, Cornelia. This is an honor to be invited back to your show. Thank you. Yes, we, we enjoyed having you. It was almost uh, probably almost a year ago when you were here before. And um, that was also, you gave so much during that time. I just want to send people back to it if they want to go look at it. Uh, again, the show that we did with you back then, they can go to Cornelia Stephanie YouTube and look at the Lady Boss series. And there is a show there that they can find uh, what you were talking about. I think we were talking about at that point, did your book just come out at that time? It was, I think it had just hit, hit the bestseller list. And so we talked about, yes. Yeah. Bestseller. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely, it's definitely a book that you want to have in your library. So uh, definitely want to send people there. And of course they can get the book on Amazon as well. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, how are you doing? How are you handling everything? You know, here it is. We are, what is this July 23rd or 24th, something like that. It's been a weird year, Cornelia. I'm not going to lie. This coronavirus has been a weird year. And um, like on a personal level, my, we, we sold our home and we're building a home. So I'm like in this limbo state of this, this area that, I'm, that you see me. I'm, I live at my mother-in-law's house for another probably month before my home is completely built. So I'm in like, like, it's a very weird time with the coronavirus and my living situation. But it's... Um, one thing that is not changed for me is my commitment to my health. And more than ever, we need to do everything for our immune system. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I live with, a, like I said, my mother-in-law, she's 70 years old. She is definitely um, somebody who we want to protect from the coronavirus. And so my, my children and myself, were, we're staying, we're social distancing, not sending the kids to camps and things so we can protect her while we're living in her under her roof. Um, before we move and um, we're not sending them to school. Um, we're going to do the distance learning. And, um, and that said, I, on top of it, I'm hundred percent committed to keeping myself extremely healthy and vibrant. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're actually not going to just talk about uh, overall health. We're going to talk specifically about the five day fasting mimicking diet. That's one of the, one of the main topics we're going to talk about today. Um, as this is a, a, a highly clinically studied method to uh, shrink tumors and fat cells. So um, yeah, do you want to ask any questions about that? Or do you want me just to kind of go into it? Well, I do want to I do want to um, just share a little bit about the notes that you prepared for the show. I want to, um, you know, talk a little bit about that. And then we can go right into it. But first, I want to say that I totally... Uh, can appreciate where you are with the whole moving situation and not really feeling settled with, you yeah. know, all this, you know, 2020 has been so uh, uh, different than anything we've ever experienced before. And personally, for me too, I recently moved from the place where I used to live, I, you know, in a rental that I was in and I moved and I've been here now for probably a, a month. And um, so it's very strange time to juggle all of these things while this virus and everything that's going on. And then where you're continuously being asked with, you know, putting your values first 
and you know what's true for you and standing in your strength and standing in your power and making sure that you've got your health as a number one priority. And then with you talking about your mother-in-law and your children that you're going to not send your children to school, that's obviously a choice that you and your husband sat down and talked about and made that decision, right? Because when the schools open again in the fall, you guys must have talked about that you don't want the children to go there, catch anything, bring it home to mother-in-law. Is that, was that part of the discussion? That was part of the discussion, but also, um, like I have a kindergartner and a third grade, uh, one going into kindergarten, one going into third grade and wearing masks for several hours a day is like, I can barely get them to keep their mask on in a grocery store, especially my kindergartner. And I just, I, I'm so grateful that I work from home and that I can keep them home and I will be able to oversee, um, whatever distant learning that they're doing. So, and I want to, there's, it's, that's a big decision. It's a very personal decision, but I also was reading about the teachers in our community who are being pressured to go back. And some of them are feeling that they're too immune compromised and they didn't want to put their lives at risk. And I felt like it was the socially conscious decision to make, to take the burden off of the teachers because I can. And there's a lot of parents that can't make that decision. And yeah. so I just, I'm going to take the hit as a woman, as a mom, like I will keep my kids home and and we'll do the distance learning. So the, the people that cannot make that decision and need to send their kids to school, there'll be less children in, in, the, in that space so that they can go back. Yeah, I think it's a courageous move that you're doing that. And it's just, I think, again, a lot of people that have the freedom to be able to choose to do what you're doing, it's a powerful move to make. And it's, it's very encouraging. And, um, you know, and again, like you said, it's going to open the door for the people that really can't that there's more space for them there. So it's wonderful that you are, you are doing that. So coming back to our topic, what we're talking about today, first of all, I don't, I don't think I said this at the intro is this is actually episode handle the lump, heal your life part 15. We've done 15 episodes of handle the lump, heal your life. And again, the lump and heal your life. The lump can be about anything. So this is a uh, this is a wonderful way to look at it. Today we're going to talk about the art of intermittent fasting and how to shrink fat cells and tumors. Summer will teach us how to fast for fat loss as well as how to fast to shrink tumors. We're going to discuss the five-day fasting mimicking diet and learn how intermittent fasting is a simple and free pattern of eating that you can easily incorporate into your life to create health and freedom from food cravings. We're going to discover how fasting will get us to our ideal body weight at any age while boosting our immune system. Intermittent fasting has been labeled as the fountain of youth and it's easier to do with summer's proving, proven fasting strategies. And that's really important, the strategies. So in this segment, we're going to talk about 24-hour fast versus five-day fast. So yeah. let's get into it. There it is right there. So I, I am a, I'm a weight loss coach to women specifically. And I teach women a way to eat that is going to speed up their metabolism and then fasting as the, as the technique to burn off the body fat. And what I love about fasting in general, whether it's a 24 hour fast or a five day fast, we have what, what we're looking for in a fast is something called autophagy. So the word autophagy is, is a Greek word that uh, it, it means self-eating. And it's kind of gross. It sounds kind of gross, like eating your, why would you want to eat yourself? But it's actually an amazing system. The human body blows my mind over and over again that we are meant to heal. And when you give the body the right ingredients, or in this case, the right break from food, your body will eat the bad parts of itself. And I'll get really specific, but not in a super scientific way so we can all understand. So think like if you, for those who are watching, if you're listening, it's okay to sit, look at your like finger. So I've, I'm sticking my finger up and just imagine that this is a cell. Um, we have like billions, trillions of cells in our body. I don't even know how many cells we have in our body, in the human body. But after a, a while, um, each cell will get little like parts, little like teeny tiny parts that are dead and decaying. 
And um, if you remember from high school biology, that um, your every cell in your body regenerates in 90 days. So who you were 90 days ago is completely different than who, who you are today. All of your cells are regenerating. When the cells replicate themselves 90 days from now, and they have those dead and decaying little parts then they are replicating little dead and decaying cells. So they're just not as healthy cells. This is what wrinkles are right here. These little these wrinkles that we, that we get. That's just our body over time replicating funky cells that are just not as youthful and healthy as they were when we were children. And we have a unique opportunity through autophagy to allow, to, to allow your cell to clean itself. It's kind of like your cell eating. Autophagy is it's self-eating. It's eating the dead and decaying parts. Autophagy, we activate aut autophagy in fasting, uh, specifically when we're fasting from protein and calories and protein. So uh, you know that protein is amino acids and amino acids are essential. So your body has to have protein when you deprive your body of protein for 24 hours and up to five days, your body is like, I have to have protein and it forages for protein. And it actually will get it from the dead and decaying parts of your cell. And that is what is so brilliant about the human body. We evolved with this inborn system called autophagy. When we stop eating, that it will eat the dead and decaying parts of itself. So when we, when our cells replicate, they're replicating only the healthy, vibrant, high functioning part of the cell. And if you think about where we were thousands of years ago as a culture, when there was no such thing as refrigerators, pantries, and grocery stores, and we were like hunting and gathering for food. And during winter, there was a lot, there was not very much food. We have an abundance of food in the summertime. And in the winter time, the winter came, and there was just no food in spring. And so we we evolved fasting. And so this system, we're used to cleaning up the dead and decaying cells. And now in 2020, when there's constant refrigeration and pantries and grocery stores and everything is stocked and we're constantly eating, we never pause. I mean, there's people who are eat, wake up in the middle of the night and eat. That's a really common phenomenon where people are eating all day long and you're never giving your body a break. So now as uh, to keep, to really maintain human health, we have to initiate fasting and bring it back as a health practice so that we can force our bodies into this autophagy so that we can interrupt our, 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 our uh, wrinkles, you know, like if, if anything, if you just do it to get rid of your wrinkles, right? Or if uh, to shrink your fat cells, or to shrink the tumor cells. And this is what I get really excited about because my passion is health more than anything. I don't really, really don't care about what, what you look like in a bikini. And that's what people want to come to me to like get in their skinny jeans or their bikinis. But I really just am so passionate about your health. And the same, the same technique that's going to get you in the bikini is that what's going to shrink those tumor cells. And so I just feel really good about what I teach to women because the, the research is there. It's done by Dr. Walter Longo, who's funded by the National Institute of Health. I and mean, there's so much science behind it. And um, I really just want to, am passionate about teaching people how to fast in a really healthy and safe way. That's going to upregulate your hormones, great for hormonal health, shrink those fat cells and potential tumors at the same time. Yes, that's fantastic. I love, you know, the the whole um, self eating piece, because, you know, we're, we're continuously putting food into our system. And, you know, part of the weight loss piece that happens also when you were talking about eating the, you know, autophagy is eating the dead cells, is that it also eats some of your stored fat. Is that is that right? It eats some of your Absolutely. stored fat. So, yeah. so your, your fat cells, if you just like get a hold of, you know, just grab a hold of your, any, anywhere there's fat on your body, your belly fat, your, your, your back fat, your, on your butt, anywhere, that's just calories that are being stored in your fat cells. So when you fast, you are liberating those calories that you're storing. And this is the other beautiful thing about humans is our fat cells. We get to start celebrating them instead of just being angry at them all the time. They are here. They, we would be dead without our fat cells. It is really our, 
our backup fuel tank. So we humans, we have two fuel tanks. That really, our car, think of a car with two fuel tanks. We have, we store some calories that we eat today in our liver. And once our liver runs out of those calories, it has to go to your fat cells to liberate those calories that we've been storing. I mean, you could literally burn off a Christmas dinner you ate 20 years ago today if you just stop if, stop eating and start fasting. And that's what we that's what we realize that we can do. You have the power to do that. Yeah. So you said 24 hour fast versus a five five day fast. So what when does autophagy begin? Like on day three, does that or does it begin within 24 hours? So you're going to get a mild amount of autophagy in a 24 hour fast. And so I, I really recommend starting with a five day or excuse me, a 24 hour fast. And I, I have women doing um, those. This is just really more for fat loss. If you, for women who are wanting to lose weight, they do two 24 hour fasts every week. Mondays and Thursday, we don't do them on consecutive days typically. Say that but if you're really I'm wanting to go for, because uh, we had okay, a- so 20, okay, so 24 hour fast, two days a week on non consecutive days, and what that really looks like is that you would stop eating food. Um, let's say uh, at dinner on uh, Sunday night, on after dinner you stop eating, and then you break your fast Monday night at dinner. So you're actually eating seven days a week. You're never going an entire day without eating. You're just skipping breakfast and lunch and snacks on Monday and then again on Thursday. And that'll give you a 24-hour fat period where you're just drinking water and maybe coffee, herbal teas, no sugar in there. And that'll get you that'll get you a, a, a decent amount of autophagy. And if you want to take it to another level, when you, when you break your fast and have a small dinner, it's usually about a 500 calorie dinner. It's not a large dinner on your fasting days, but if you, if you abstain from protein, um, like no meats, no lentils with your, with that dinner, and you just keep it kind of to, um, vegetables, maybe some fruits and low, very low calorie or low protein dinner, then you're going to really keep the autophagy and have um, really a 36 hour autophagy fast. And that can be really helpful to do that once a week. I have a lot of women doing that once a week to um, induce autophagy, but then quarterly we're starting to practice in my, in my group of women that I teach um, I take them through fasting every week. We're starting to do the five day fasting mimicking diet, because you can either do a five day water fast, which I've done, and they're powerful for healing. They're incredible, but they are also take so much mindset and willpower to get through five days of water fasting. And for somebody who has never fasted before, it can be so incredibly intimidating. And um, I know the doctors who I've studied under Dr. Zach Bush and other doctors who teach um, the five day fat water fast, they really don't recommend going much longer than five days without a doctor's supervision. So I just wanted to put that out there. I'm not a doctor. I have studied under doctors um, to help me understand that it's absolutely safe for me to do a five day water fast without a doctor's supervision, but really much longer than five days, they typically recommend going to um, having a doctor's supervision. Um, for a water fast. I don't take my clients through a five-day water fast. I take them through a fasting mimicking diet, which was, um, it, it, it was, it, um, Dr. Walter Longo started the fasting mimicking diet and he has a product called Prolon, P-R-O-L-O-N. I have no affiliation with Dr. Walter Longo or Prolon. Um, I'm just saying that he sells um, these boxes of food. It's like five days of food that he'll sell for, I think it's about $250. It's a bit pricey. That's American. And, um, and it gives you everything that you need in a package to get through a five day fasting mimicking diet. Um, I can tell you, but I I take my women through and we, we can, we could kind of hack the five day fasting mimicking diet without spending the $250. And I can kind of talk a little bit about this with your viewers, if you'd like to. Yeah, I would like to find out. So, because a couple of questions I have first, you said, uh, you know, when we're doing the, um, we want to sustain, uh, stay, stay away from protein. 
when we're fasting, right? And what what's the reasoning behind the protein piece? And when we're, when we're, when we're because your, 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 your body has to have protein. So uh, amino acids are essential. And when you deprive your body of protein, it will start to forage for the protein wherever it can get it. So what's really cool is that it's going to actually, the dead and decaying parts of your cell has some protein in it. And so that's what autophagy is. It's the body. It's like, I'm going to eat the dead and decaying. It's so intuitively intelligent that it will clean itself to forage for that little bit of protein that it can get. And then there you are young and youthful again, youthful <laughs> and healthy. It's brilliant. Our bodies know how to heal. And that's what I love. When we give them the right tools, our body will heal. Yeah. And we create, we create the right environment, right? Because our bodies are our temples and our bodies are, is so important, you know, and that's how we, you know, how we express ourselves, how we live and how we, you know, make our lives better when we're feeling healthy and when we're feeling well. And so tell us about the, the hacking of the mimicking diet. Like what, what does that look like? Yeah. So I, because I've taken Walter Longo's um, uh, Prolon diet so many times, I've eaten it several times, um, invested in it that I, uh, I understand I've, I've looked at the calorie breakdown, the fat, the carbohydrates and the protein breakdown. And really it's going to be five days where you you would eat on the first day, a thousand calories of food. And then on day two, three, four, and five, you would only eat 800 calories. So it's a really low calorie vegan diet. So think vegan and low calorie, but also low protein. So it's not like a vegan diet where you're eating lentils or even quinoa for that matter. This is going to be, um, you're wanting to make sure that your protein content is under 20 grams a day. And we think of, um, 20 grams, you can really think that that's not a lot, but the truth is broccoli has a, a good amount of protein in it. And mm -hmm. so does spinach. And so do all of the vegetables have protein. And we always forget to count those, those, that plant protein in when we're, when we're thinking of our macronutrients. And so you really get, this is when you got to get connected with Google and type in like protein content of like a, you know, a cup of broccoli and really add it up. But you're, you're wanting to stick with avocados, um, green vegetables, you can lean into green powders, macadamia nuts are pretty low protein and low carb nutrient dense um, food that a lot of people will, will include in the fasting mimicking diet. But you're wanting to make sure that it's like good, good amount of monounsaturated fat, extra virgin olive oil on vegetables, along with avocado or macadamia nuts, it's going to be a really good way to get your eight, 800 calories. And some people will do that in two meals and some people will do that in one meal and just do that for five days really. And keep that, just keep that protein under 20 grams and the calories under 800 on days two, three, four, and five. And then what's, and, and the first day you can have a, a thousand to 1100 um, calories. And what's really even as important as um, fasting is breaking your fast. So fasting and feasting go together like really well. I remember that, um, I know we have to go to break in a couple of minutes, but I'll, 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 I'll tell a, a story and we'll come, we'll circle back to this. When fasting became uh, uh, mainstream, I remember seeing it on um on, on like a, a nightly news show. And they, they did a story of a woman who was losing weight with intermittent fasting. And she was going through the grocery aisles to pick all of the food that she would eat when she was finishing her fast. And she was buying ice cream and she was buying donuts and she was buying all this horrific food, frozen pizzas. And, um, and she, and, and I got very angry because this is the wrong way to fast. You will sabotage your health and your, and your overall weight loss over time. If you do that, 
the feasting is really important. And I'd love to circle back and talk about that more after the break, Cornelia. Yes. And what the other thing I want to talk about, this is great. Uh, what I want to talk about is that, is it safe to fast when you have cancer? And because this is, you know, a, a show of handle the lump, heal your life. We always, we talk about cancer here and we talk about hormones and we talk about tumors and how to, you know, um, heal from them. And um, so this will be something that I also want to touch base when we come back. We'll take a break and we'll be right back with Summer Peterson. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Cornelia Stephanie, and I'm with Summer Peterson, and we're talking about intermittent fasting today and how to uh, shrink your fat cells, how to get into a better state of health. And even uh, we're talking about does fasting interfere, you know, when you have cancer, if you have cancer? And what, what do you say about that? Is it safe to fast? So all of the clinical research that is, so in my field, which is weight loss, all of the clinical research on weight loss and fasting has come from the cancer researchers because there's not like a lot of money in weight loss, right? All the money is in, you know, being funded to the cancer researchers. And so there's so much clinical studies um, about the benefits of fasting during chemotherapy treatments. I actually can tell you an anecdotal story of a friend who had lymphoma and uh, he went, uh, he actually called Walter Longo's team and got the protocol of um, really, a, at that point, it was a five day water fast. This is before Prolon had been invented. And he did the five day water fast with every chemotherapy treatment. His cancer was gone after the first treatment. And um, his oncologist didn't want to stop chemotherapy. So he just kept going with it. And he's been cancer free for several years um, at this point. And um, obviously, you know, I'm not a doctor. And so I will, I'm not going to make any sort of, you know, broad statements that everybody should be fasting. But I know personally, if it, some, a family member of mine had cancer, I would absolutely be recommending fasting, especially the five day fast every month for weight loss. It's typically depending on how, you know, how much weight is to be lost. It's a five day fast, either quarterly or monthly. Um, I, te I teach it quarterly and then we do the five, two method of intermittent fasting and, um, for the rest of the time, um, just to keep that metabolism up and to keep, um, burning off your fat weekly. Um, but I also just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, fasting just in general. I, I do listen to a lot of doctors, um, get their insight on fasting cancer because it's something that's just near and dear to my heart. I've lost both of my parents to cancer. And so I'm passionate about it as much for keeping healthy and thin as I am to prevent myself from, you know, they both died before their 60th birthday. So I really feel like I'm, I need to stay healthy. I've got two little boys and one doctor explained it to me this way that like he, he had three doctors or excuse me, three clients all with the same breast cancer. And one of them, her breast cancer, they believed came from just really poor lifestyle, horrible diet, you know, drinking diet, soda all day long, junk food, just never moving, you know, just really horrible lifestyle. And another woman, they believed that her cancer likely came from uh, mercury and um, uh, parasites and things. And another woman, they believe that the cancer came from um, mold, uh, mold toxicity and Lyme disease. So like, it's typically like a few, you know, the perfect storm, a few things over here, uh, cavitations, mold toxicity and Lyme disease. And then another, you know, all of these, they all come from a different thing, same cancer, right? Yeah. And and uh, the treatment is going to be different, of course, you know, like the w woman who's eating junk food, a diet soda all day long, well, they're going to really help her get a more nutrient dense diet and get off of those things. But fasting seems to fit in as a pro protocol with all of these women in terms of detoxing. It's just about if whether your detox pathways are... Um, available to handle the fasting. Like some women, their cancer, it's so like a cavitation can really, uh, getting the cavitation removed can really evoke a crisis. And so they really need to make sure that the detox pathways are there, right? And you'll be working with a special doctor around that and, uh, with your lymph system. I know I do like, you know, lymph massage on my body, dry brushing with the, after I do the lymph pumping and 
all over my body and, 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 you know, hiking and, and things like that, that we could keep our, our lymph flowing and moving. So we are you know, helping that, those detox pathways, um, coffee enema, you know, what, whatever your, you know, naturopath or, um, whatever doctor you're kind of working with, um, to help support your, the detox pathways. Um, if you do have cancer, you're going to want to look at that because, um, for some people, they're not going to have any detox symptoms with fasting and some people really will. And so that's, that's where I would recommend working with, um, a doctor who has, has more awareness of these issues, detox pathways. And yeah. And somebody could contact you and you could lead them in the right direction if they wanted to, uh, have somebody to somebody else to talk to if they find themselves in that situation. Does fasting slow down your metabolism? Well, a, a 24 hour fast will speed up your metabolism on average about 15% um, during the duration of the fast. And once you once you start feeding again, your metabolism will go go back. The only thing that slows down your metabolism a little bit is weight loss, which is really funny. Um, and, but it's, it's negligible. And so if you like a, a woman at 180 pounds versus if once she loses 50 pounds and is down to one, one, uh, 30, um, her metabolism is going to be different because there's less, you know, work for her body. It's going to be negligibly smaller, but not in that way that we're so scared of like, Oh, once you hit 130, you're going to lose the weight again. It's actually what really deeply slows down the metabolism is dieting and exercising. So uh, restricting calories every single day is going to, is devastating, devastating to your metabolism. And so this brings me back to the point of uh, feasting, the feast famine cycles of why refeeding is so crucial when it comes to intermittent fasting. So I had told the story about the woman who was eating the pizza and the donuts and the ice cream on her non-fasting days. And at that point was still losing weight. Well, congratulations for losing weight, but you're damaging your health and your body at such a deep cellular level. I would never recommend refeeding um, with, e with any sugar or processed carbohydrates. And this is the foundation of my weight loss system is that we clean up the diet. Um, a lot of people think that a, a clean eating diet, a clean eating plan is a weight loss plan and it's the foundation of weight loss, but it's not a weight loss plan. Fasting is how you, you actually lose the fat. So eat clean and then do the fasting. And that's how you're going to really burn off. You're going to speed up your metabolism by eating clean and then burn off that body fat by fasting. And then oh, you're probably familiar, Cornelia gut microbiome. I'm sure you've had an expert on the show at some point speaking about gut health and how profoundly important your gut health is to everything from your brain function to your immunity to like all of it. And so what's, what I love about fasting is that it can really promote um, gut health. And when you fast, you're fasting all the trillions of bacteria that are living inside your gut as well. You fast them back. And then who do you want to refeed? Do you want to refeed the healthy guys? Or do you want to re refeed the guys that are, are really wreaking havoc in your life? So you get to choose who you refeed the day after the fast or the meal and the, the, the couple meals after the fast. And that's how we dramatically shift our gut microbiome. Nothing is going to shift it faster than intermittent fasting. So you want to starve back all the guys in your gut, whether you do it for 24 hours or for five days, you're starving them all back. And then you refeed and you grow the armies of the good guys. And that's, you eat, you refeed them with uh, healthy foods like vegetables and avocados, the really healthy fats, the extra virgin olive oil and, um, the organic, if you're, if you're a meat eater, then it's, you know, you want to do the grass fed meats and the pasture raised, um, eggs and chickens. And, um, and if you're not a meat eater, you just want to make sure that you're not reaching for the bread. <laughs> so that's like the big, the big no, no of the plant-based diet is to eat a lot of bread. So you're wanting to really, if you're going to do plant-based, just really do organic vegetables. And, um, if you're eating a lot of legumes, make, making sure that you're soaking them and sprouting them and doing, eating them the right way to not get too many of those phytates and lectins in your diet. Um, and you're going to, 
do you plan, do you, you know, because we talked about strategy earlier, do you, do you have, um, do you prefer to have a strategy in place for what you're going to, what your meal plans are going to be like, you know, when you're refeeding and so to have your meals ready or your go-to ready, because, you know, a lot of people are most likely going to be really hungry at that time. And is it good for them to know what they're going to be eating when they're going to be eating again? It is. And the, the longer that you fast, the less, the easier that it is. For instance, yesterday I fasted and like I, I told you that I'm, I'm currently for a very short period of time living at my mother-in-law's home and she was making dinner for the family. And sometimes she does, sometimes I do. And uh, we kind of do that, that task. And I happened to be fasting yesterday and she put the the dinner in the wrong oven. And like, and so we were expecting to have dinner at like 530. And we didn't end up eating dinner until closer to seven. And because I've been fasting for so long, that my body kicks in of like, I don't feel intense hunger or brain fog anymore. Because I know my train my body now to shift into fat burning mode versus carb burning. And that's what we call metabolic flexibility. And that is exactly what you know that you are healthy when you can really easily shift into fat burning mode. So I'm burning off my belly fat and I just had an extra hour and a half to burn it off and had a later dinner than I had planned. And there was no stress and no crazy hunger hormones. And that will happen to you over time. And a really, a great trick of getting there. Um, if you're going to fast tomorrow, I would absolutely recommend that, especially with dinner tonight, you add an, a little bit of extra fat in to your meal, whether it's an extra tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil or um, an avocado with your meal, because fat is the is the one macronutrient that is uh, turns off your hunger hormones. It relaxes your body and it tells your body, okay, there's an abundance of food and I am safe. Mm -hmm. And then I like breaking my my fast with a good amount of healthy fat as well, because that's the other piece that tells your body that there's an abundance of food. I am safe. Don't slow down my metabolism all as well. Mm -hmm. Because when we start to eat a lot of carbs and low fat diets, um, not, I'm not saying to eat a ton of like saturated fats here. I'm, I'm just saying to eat when we deprive ourselves of the macronutrient of fat, it tells our body like, Oh, scarcity is about to come. Winter's coming. It's, it's late fall time to slow down my metabolism, hold on to those calories because winter's coming. And so we really want to tell our, our body that I'm safe. There's abundance. I have a lot of, a lot of food around me. And fat is the macronutrient that tells your body that turns off your hunger hormones, turns off those crushes, those cravings. Yeah. And I, I even, I feel that, you know, when I take that, when I eat fat first, even when I'm beginning to eat again, because I, I'm an intermittent faster. I've been intermittent fasting for the last three years since 2017. And I love it. It's part of my lifestyle. So it's, um, I find that when I eat fat first, uh, that I get full quicker too. Right. Have you noticed that too? Like when you oh, eat, oh. you know, because all of a sudden you're, you're satiated more, you know, you're satiated and it's like, you're not looking to eat. You don't really feel the need to eat that much because you're fuller, you get fuller quicker. So we, we've been trained to think that we need to fill our bellies with a big volume of food in order to feel full. So I used to believe that I needed to go get that super burrito at the taqueria to fill my belly, to really get that feeling of satiety. And while yes, a burrito is going to make you feel bloated and full. But the, what's, what's really happening is on a hormonal level, we stimulate the satiety hormones, the leptin, by eating fat. It's actually a feeling full is a hormonal process, not a volume of food thing. Mm -hmm. And so it was probably a combination of like way too much food in my body being like, oh my gosh, stop eating because that's way too much food, but also the guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fat, the fat in that, that you're eating that is 
sends the signal to your leptin hormones, the, the satiety hormone, saying, okay, I've had enough. Yay, I'm, I'm fed. I'm, all is good in this world. And so that's why the ketogenic diet has gained such popularity and why it has worked for so many people. And I'm not saying that you have to go keto to lose weight. You absolutely don't. But it can be a, a go keto for a couple of days before fasting to really set you up for a, a, a fast that is easy and allows your body to slip right into fat burning when you stop eating because your body already knows how to create, make those ketones. And you, you have really good mi mind clarity when you fast, when you, when you come from ketosis into fasting, but you don't have to go ketosis for life. And you certainly shouldn't, <laughs> you yeah. certainly should be repeating at times with good, healthy carbohydrates because our gut needs them. So if you're, if you want to follow a ketogenic diet, by all means, you're absolutely welcome to just make sure that you come out of it at least one day a week. And honestly, for women, um, the, the doctors that I follow really want women to, whether you're premenopausal or postmenopausal, to have a, about a five day period um, around in your cycle, right, right before you, uh, you bleed, if you're still bleeding or at, right before the full moon, if you're not of eating carbs of like carb loading um, and really giving your body that nourishment and that feeling of like, okay, I'm, there's abundance of carbs as well. And so you can do keto the rest of the time if you'd like to, but make sure you pause and refeed with carbs. Good. Yeah. I love that. How many calories, grams of protein, fat and carbs are best? So um, that answer, it, I don't have an answer for you. I actually do not believe in counting those things and macronutrients. If you're going to follow the ketogenic diet, you need to keep your, your carb, your carb count under 50 grams. Um, and I, I do not believe in counting calories at all. Not all calories are created equal. Let me give you a quick example of why, because you're going to intuitively really get this. If you eat 250 calories of broccoli, it's going to do a completely different thing to your body hormonally than if you eat 250 calories of a candy bar. You cannot count calories. The candy bar is going to put you in a fat storing mode. And the broccoli is going to put you in a fat burning mode. And so you cannot count calories and expect that you're going to like burn off calories. I remember when I was overweight, I was going to spin class. I was going, I was, I had an elliptical machine at home and I was going to Pilates classes and I was walking my dog. I was burning more calories than I've ever burned in my life. And I could not lose a pound to save my life. And I was eating the wrong foods. I was eating granola for breakfast every day. And I was eating high sugary, lots of bread. I was just, I didn't get it. I did not understand the mechanics of weight loss. So you have to stop cutting calories. And I really just absolutely believe that some people need more protein than others. And I don't know where you fit or where I fit. And honestly, there's times where I'm like, I need a steak. Like I really like I can feel my need of needing protein and then I'll go a few days with eating vegetarian. And I really believe that having the flexibility to go in and out of different dieting lifestyles, sometimes I'll be keto, sometimes I'll be higher carb. And in the summertime, when there's a lot of abundance of berries at the farmer's market, I'm less keto in the summertime, honestly. And in the wintertime, when there's really not an abundance of carbohydrates, it's a lot uh, in nature then it's a, it, it's intuitive for us to have more keto and fasting times in the, in the winter and spring. Yeah. I love that summer. I love the freedom of how you're talking about, you know, your flow using keto, you know, you then going into the meat and, you know, just cycling back and forth in between that just seems uh, very free to um, listen to your body and do the, the things that are good for your body on an intuitive basis, like what your body needs. Right. And I love what you, how you described the calorie, um, you know, not all calories are created equal. And so that's so true. You brought a gift today for the audience. Tell us about the gift and we're going to put this gift in the um, YouTube link. So we'll put it in the YouTube link. You'll be able to download it from there. So why don't you um, share with us what that is? Yeah, I created an intermittent fasting guide. It's a really comprehensive guide to everything that you need to know about intermittent fasting. 
And um, it's, I typically sell it for just $11 on my website, but we're giving it to your community for free. I have a, li a special link that we created. You're getting it absolutely for free. So um, yeah, I gave it to your people. So you can put that link in and it will be bypass the payment method and you will get this. I think it's a 20 page. I mean, it was real. it's a comprehensive intermittent fasting guide, but I but as the way I speak, I write. So it's really it's comprehensive, but really easy to grok, to really get. So you'll be able to really understand the art of intermittent fasting, why you should be doing it, and how to do it, how to execute it correctly. Good. I, it's exciting. It's such an exciting way to approach our health and to find new ways that support and nourish our body. And fasting is part of that because it's giving your digestion a break like you said it's giving your digestion a pause because we're continuously under so much stress under so much pressure and just you know putting food in and continuously putting so much pressure on our bodies that this is a way that you can give your body a break and heal and nourish yourself and I'll, let me just circle back to the word when you said freedom, and that's actually my big why as well of why I do what I do, because finding intermittent fasting in my life has freed me up from my obsession with co my constant obsession with what's in the refrigerator, what's going to be my next meal. It was a lifelong of uh, disordered eating in a way of just constantly obsessing over the next meal. I have gained so much freedom from my addictions to food, my obsessions with food, my cravings, like those constant cravings of, I have to eat chips late at night. I have to have something late at night. I don't ever eat anything after dinner, not even a single blueberry, no food after dinner. And I'm no longer obsessed. I know I understand the difference between hunger and thirst now. And that it's so often when I feel hungry, it's actually thirst. And so I drink a lot of electrolyte water and regular free water and herbal teas and things. Uh, I, lo I love putting lemon or lime in water as well. It's a really hydrating way, um, but always electrolyte water once a day to really light my cells up and take in all of the water. So we need to make sure we're, we're very hydrated and that's also good for our lymph system and our drainage um, to help our detox pathway. So the freedom that you get from intermittent fasting, freedom from cravings, freedom from hunger, freedom from obsessing about your next meal and food is just profound. And I would say stick with it. And it doesn't happen overnight. So I'm also an advocate for having a coach or a community that you can join and fast in community with others because that's so powerful to have support I, and yeah. accountability. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a community summer that people can join? Yeah. So my company um, that I founded is called Body Soul Shine. And I have women inside the Body Soul Shine sisterhood that um, I take through fasting weekly. And I'm in there daily teaching them exactly what to eat and when to eat it. Because the art of um, health and, and weight loss is all about what to eat and when to eat it. It has nothing to do with cutting calories and exercising. So it's really an art form. And I'm in there every day with my ladies in the Body Soul Shine Sisterhood. And you can find me on bodysoulshine.com. Wonderful. It's awesome that you you were on with us again today, inspiring us into you know health and wellness and intermittent fasting. It was a wonderful show. What do you want to leave our audience with today before we close out? I just want to leave you with the image that your body knows what to do when you give it the right tools. And so intermittent fasting is my number one favorite tool to pause and allow your body to heal itself. You, you will heal, you can heal when given the right tools. Your body knows what to do and give it that pause with intermittent fasting. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Summer Peterson, for being on. And for all of you out there that have listened to this show today, share it with your friends, share it with your family, and let's spread the news that intermittent fasting is actually a tool to self-healing and it's going to make your life better. Thanks so much for listening and tuning in and stay tuned, everyone, because we're getting ready to do another show right now, Teens and Money. Very important. Teens and money, how to teach your teens about having a great relationship with money. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you. Bye, Summer. Bye for now.